He feeds the 5,000. Of course you'd have multitudes and crowds. And they find Jesus. Verse 24. Verse 24. I love this right here because it's just, it, it's so amazing what happens here. 24 to 26. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into the boats and came to Capernaum uh, uh, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered and said, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you what? What does it say? Ate. You ate. You know that most of the feeding of the 5,000, most of those 5,000 people that ate, they weren't really believers. They just liked the food. That's it. Because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Wow. When you read this verse in context, it's amazing that Christ knew they only wanted to be fed. But they asked a great question. Verse 28 then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? That we may work the works of God. Okay, what shall we do? See, the problem here is they want to do something. Work, 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 work. People want to work for salvation. And look at Christ's answer. Here it is. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you, read it with me, believe in him who he sent. In other words, he's saying, trust me as your savior. Everything's fine when I'm feeding people and healing people, but now we get into doctrine. Believe, believe, believe. Wow. See, here is the plan of salvation, faith in Christ alone, the truth that Christ is the only way he used food as an illustration because he just fed them. Verse 35, and Jesus answered them, I am the bread of life. What did he feed them? Loaves and fishes, right? Okay. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the ones who come to me, I will by no means cast out. Great verses here. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up for the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Great verses, huh? Well, verse 47. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Now, what is he talking about? Is he talking about eating his flesh? He's talking about belief, right? But he's comparing what? Bread. Because he just fed them. So that's what we do as preachers. We take something that happens and you, you kind of uh, use that and, and you witness to people with something you know. And this is what they were talking about here. Okay? Now it says, for 48, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. Okay? And are dead. But this bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. Wow. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, and if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread that I shall give it is my flesh, which I shall uh, give for the life of the world. Okay, the hard truth that Christ is the only way he uses food as an illustration because he just fed them. You know that you have food, and you don't have it inside until you what? Consume it will compare with Christ. You don't have Christ until you accept him. The controversy, verse 52. The Jews therefore called among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? What? Where did they get that from? 
See, an unbeliever cannot understand the Bible. They can't do that. Literal significance. The eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood metaphorically symbolized the need for accepting Jesus Christ. The mouth accepts food, so the heart, by belief, accepts the message. Here again, the Jews could not see the real spiritual significance and truth behind Jesus' statement. Note, this has nothing to do with communion or transubstantiation, the Catholic doctrine of their communion. They have a priest standing up there, and he says certain words in Latin, and he changes the bread into the body of Christ and the wine into his blood. And that's why when they're giving communion in a Catholic church, they don't want the body of Christ on the floor, so they put something underneath you. So if you drop it, it goes there. This has nothing to do with communion. All of John 6, it has to do with belief. And that's exactly what it deals with. First, communion is a church ordinance, and the church wasn't even started until Christ went to heaven. It's not talking about communion. Secondly, communion is a work, and Christ just talked about belief. Oh, let's see, verse 29. What does it say here in 29? It says, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Okay? Whew. Number four, stop the exodus of the church. Stop the exodus of the church. Here are some practical things that you can do. First of all, number one, take care of yourself. Go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Take care of yourself. Don't worry what the other person is doing. Do your responsibility. Well, I wish so-and-so would start being active. Worry about you being active. Okay? I wish so-and-so would teach a Sunday school class. Maybe you should teach a Sunday school class. John 6, 4, and 5. It says, but let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one, notice what it says, shall bear his own load. Okay? So number one, practical advice, take care of yourself. Number two, have a daily walk with the Lord through prayer and studying his word. Okay, let's go to Psalm 119. Usually if you go to Psalm, it'll, it'll probably open 119, because it is the longest chapter in the Bible. All 176 verses. No, we're not going to read those, but we are going to read 169 and 170. Okay? 169. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication, my prayer, Come before you, deliver me according to your word. Secondly, have a daily walk with the Lord through prayer and studying his word. This is one of the few verses in the Bible, these verses together, that take prayer, supplication, and the word of God together as part of your life. Okay? Good verses. Matter of fact, so good, I'm going to read it again. 169, let my cry come before you, O Lord, give me understanding according to your word and let my prayer, my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. Number three. I'm not even going to have you turn to this first because I know you know it. Always seek him first, not last, not even second. John 6, 33. Who can quote that? But seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added unto you. You know that. Seek the Lord first. Number four. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. You know where I'm going with this one. Practical things here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Be in your right place at the right time, and right now you're in the right place at the right time. Okay? Okay? not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, 
but exhorting one another, <coughs> and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay? Be in your place. Church doors are open, be here. What else are you going to do? I told you, I was lost on Sunday, last Sunday and the Sunday before. I had to stay home from church. But when I was in the hospital on Sunday, it's like, I should be at church, you know, because you know you're in the right place at the right time. So be in the right place at the right time. Number five, be an encourager of others. Verse 24, and let us consider one another in order to stir up Encourage love and good works. Encourage one another. Number six. Second John, that's one that you didn't think you were going to turn to today, right? Second John, verse six. Second John six. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Verse six, this is love that we walk according to his commandments. Wow. Okay, take your paper out, please. Take your paper out in your bulletin. See the checklist? Now what I did was this. I put it in my own words, and I'm not gonna read those verses. You can read those when you get home or tomorrow. Romans 12, nine to 21. Everything here is in those verses, okay? And so I call this Checklist time. These are found in Romans. Do I do this or do I not do this? You can check this off yourself. I'm just going to go down a list. Don't have fake love. You have real love. You either check yes or no. You hate evil. Don't let go of the good. Be kind to one another. Ooh, that's kind of tough. Is there a maybe list box I can have? No. Yes or no. Prefer others over yourself. You know what a great experiment is for your kids if you have young kids or grandkids, whatever? Take a candy bar right, and break it just with your hand like that. But make sure when you break it, you have a bigger piece on one side and a little piece on the other side. And then you give it out and says, okay, uh, who wants the candy right here? Go and pick your piece. I guarantee you almost everyone will pick the big candy and not the little one. <coughs> That's what it means, friends. Prefer others over yourself. Always be diligent and not lazy. Be zealous in activities. In other words, whatever your hand finds to do, do it heartily unto God. Don't do anything half-heartedly. Okay, number one activity, serve the Lord. Rejoice in the hope of the Lord. Be patient, wait on the Lord. Be consistent in your prayer life. Care for fellow believers. Treat enemies, ooh, here's a hard one, as friends. But you don't know my enemies. No, but I know this, treat enemies as your friends. Don't take revenge. Be hospitable. Show sympathy and empathy. Be united with believers. Don't be prideful. Stay humble in your attitude. If you're humble in your attitude, it'll come out in your practices. Don't repay evil for evil. Be visibly good to all men. And get along with everyone. Seek peace with others and then overcome evil with good. You'll find every one of those are found there in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. And I will tell you, if we're going to stop the exodus of the church, we need to have better teachers and we need to look at the word of God and hold that straight with our young people, with our older people, and be dynamic believers and faithful to the word of God. Let's bow our heads, please, and close our eyes just for a moment. Just want to ask just a few questions. Question number one, I gave the plan of salvation out. I wonder if there's someone here who's never trusted Christ, 
as your Savior, but you'd like to make your decision today for Christ. You'd like to invite him into your heart. Would you just lift your hand up, please? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, Christian, what are you going to do about this? All right, so if you're a Christian here, you either have good ground or you have thorny ground. You're either a thorny ground Christian or a good ground Christian. You know your heart. Well, pastor, I've been weeding a little bit. I, I'm getting rid of the thorns. Good. Get rid of the thorns. But maybe what you need to do is to rededicate your life for Jesus Christ so that you can be a servant for him and dedicate your life to the Lord, period. That's the most important thing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. I'm going to do that. You know every heart. You know the pavement heart. You know the stony ground heart. You know the thorny ground heart. And you know the good ground heart. And Father, you know the practical things that we can do in our life to serve you wholeheartedly. We pray that you'll bless this church, bless this invitation. May we be servants of yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, please, as we sing on that uh, invitation. I think it's only trust him, is it? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. One of these, okay. As we sing that on the verse, please.